Hey everyone, once bitten here with another battle report. So I put together a list for a tournament coming up this uh, this coming weekend. And last weekend I, I took it to the game store and I got a game in. It's a, a different list than what I usually take, or at least in some of the particulars. And so it was kind of fun just uh, trying out something new. So it's 2,400 points. We were doing a scenario that we're going to have at the tournament, and so it's basically meeting engagement. But you can you do put characters in units first before you roll in terms of whether or not they come on the board. And it also, it's a scenario that discourages heavy magic. So basically instead of 2d6 power dice, you have um, 2d3 plus 1, and your opponent gets the higher of the d3 plus 1. Uh, it is more likely that you channel on a 5 or 6, but if you roll a 1 when trying to channel, you have to roll a die again. If you roll a 5 or 6, you take a wound with no armor save. So it's just kind of different. Oh, and if you ever miscast Irresistible Force, uh, you have to roll twice, and your opponent gets to choose which result happens. <laughs> so it's uh, uh, it's discouraging somebody bringing a list that relies only on magic. So starting at the left, he de uh, we rolled off, he deployed first, so he's a giant. And you can see he's got four uh, hordes of goblins, two with spears ranked up 5 by 10, and uh, two with bows ranked up 10 by 5. Uh, in each one he has a lord level character and one fanatic. He also has six trolls and level two and a level four caster. And he might even have a hero level character in there somewhere, but, you know, it's whatever. And then on my far right, he also has this, uh, I guess it's squig hoppas with a character. So I start um, on my far right, I have a unit of ten bowmen, and I put him where it would be very difficult for him to charge me. I think I was 15 inches away, so he goes 3d6. It's possible, but, but not necessarily likely. Uh, so I thought I'd get a turn of shooting him, and then uh, on my turn, just use the bowman as a sacrificial unit to make sure that he can't charge my grail knights. Uh, so he's at the bottom. Uh, I have eight grail knights. Then I have, I actually only have five knights of the realm, one of whom is a champion. So a weakness in this list is I don't even have, uh, you know, I I can, don't even get lookout sir rolls. I've got a level four with Lord of Beasts, and these, the uh, an item that allows her to to re-roll on her first miscast result. I've got my BSB with a two-up re-rollable armor. The the Green Knight model is a hero level character with a one-up re-rollable and the Sword of Might. And then I've got on the far front left of this unit my General, who's obviously a Lord level character, and he's got heroic killing blow, um, and Heartwood Lance. So then I've got the Grail Relique, and I, I'm I'm fielding it only two wide, the Relique wide with, I think, eight uh, peasants, extra peasants. Uh, so I thought I'd give that a go. Got a trebuchet, and then I've got three um, peg knights. Another unit, small unit of bowmen. And then I've got a, a big block of men-at-arms with a level two Lore of Beasts damsel, and uh, she's got the icon of Quinella, so they have the ward save. They didn't come on, nor did my... Nine Knights Errant with the Air Entry Banner. So we go turn one, and of course he rolls a 15. I think he rolled and didn't make it, and then I guess this unit gets a re-roll. Uh, so he re-rolled, and they made it 15 inches to my bowman. <laughs> so, and that's during compulsory movement, so I couldn't even do a stand and shoot. So um, goodbye, bowman. Otherwise, he moves up uh, pretty much as fast as he can. And obviously I hang back because I don't want him having any chance of, of charging me first turn. So there's another look at the board. Uh, shoots at me all he can and only does one wound on my uh, peg knights. And I was actually pretty impressed. The um, He killed exactly six bowmen. I was one bowman away from being uh, steadfast. I mean, not steadfast on much, but I would have been steadfast. But uh, my bowman actually killed two of his squick hoppers, so <laughs> I was actually pretty impressed. But he decided to overrun and went off the board. And so we go to Bretonian turn one. So really, I don't move up. Um, I bring my um, my knights errant and my men at arms uh, onto the table. And I I'm wondering if I must have cheated there because my knights errant it doesn't look possible that I came on and moved eight inches. I'm wondering if I marched. I don't know. You, um, Let's just assume they came on and walked eight inches, and it's all legal. So I brought my knight's errand on, brought my uh, 
men at arms on, and I kept everybody else somewhat back because I want uh, to keep my bo my battle line together. I did go ahead and push up my Grail Relique in the water. If he charges it, he's not going to get a rank bonus, which doesn't mean a whole lot until my knights might join in that in that combat. So I take my uh, my peg knights and I charge his level four, knowing that I'm going to draw out his uh, at least a couple fanatics. And uh, so I do, and he angles them such that when I hit his level four, I'm going to land on them. And, and with both of them, it was just perfect. They landed right there. Uh, I have had to complete the charge, landed on them. That's 4d6 strength five hits, and um, did exactly four. I'm not sure if I even thought to randomize those hits. I bet I didn't. Uh, that's something else I need to remember to do. But anyway, uh, I, that seemed insanely lucky, but I think doing the math hammer on it afterwards, that's about odds. So uh, I was pretty happy with it. His, his lord's already sitting on one wound, I think, from a miscast. And so uh, hoping to, to do more to him in this combat and just get lucky that way. I'm, I'm very happy to sacrifice the peg knights if I can take out a level four as well as get rid of a couple fanatics. And when combat was said and done, no, I did nothing um, with the peg knights. We're just sitting there, and that's going to hurt. So otherwise, he moves up as fast as he can. If you'll notice my... Um, if you look at the trolls, there's a little yellow marker by them. My bowman did one or two wounds uh, on them in my shooting phase. Otherwise, you can see him moving up. Uh, if you look at my peg knight, he actually charged a character out of a, of a spear unit into the peg knight and then moved them up. Now, this was interesting, and he brought up the point that his um, squick hoppers move during the compulsory movement phase, but they come on the board after that, which is in the regular movement phase. So basically, when they come on the board, they can't move after that, uh, which really hurt him. That was that was totally him. I never would have thought of that. So they move back on the board, knowing they're going to get charged and charged by my uh, Grail Knights. So there's that. Of course, he, his uh, character comes in and issues a challenge, so I can't pick on his level four. And if memory serves, I don't think we I don't think we did any wounds to each other. I could be wrong. Maybe he did one wound. I don't know. Um, when all said and done, yeah, it didn't didn't help me. The the flank and the charge. He broke me in combat. Uh, they were not they weren't able to to run me down. I like that his level four is kind of sitting out there in the open. Um, but I think my guys are too far back to do a whole lot with it. But during the magic phase, I can at least try to do a, you know magic missile him or something. So he's a level four sitting on two wounds. I think he did one wound on a miscast, and the second wound. Uh, was done in combat the first time I charged in, or something like that. Anyway, so Grail Knights get the charge, and you really can't ask for more. The problem here is I had to allocate all my attacks on the hero, so I killed him many times over, but it just doesn't matter. And then his uh, squig hoppers moved towards me, and then so he got two of them that got to fight back and killed two of my Grail Knights. And if it wasn't for that, I think I just would have wiped out the unit in one fell go. So, otherwise, it looks like this. You can see I'm not really marching my guys up. The, I'm not trying to be hesitant. I actually want to be aggressive. I mean, my magic, I have two casters with Lord Beasts, which is a very offensive uh, lore to take. But I, I don't like that river. Uh, I don't like the dangerous train tests. I don't like the lack of ranks. I just don't want to be stuck in it. And so I'm very happy to, to angle my guys here and try to pick on uh, a couple units. Um, his leftmost units. Otherwise, the board looks like that. And, yeah, so my peg knight fails to rally, but then he fails to fly far enough to get out of my way, and so he lands right in front of my character heavy model. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> it was, oh, man, just right, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, after combat, I, I'm missing two grail knights, he's missing everything else. Uh, I think I did... I didn't kill everybody, of course. I broke them and ran them down. So I don't like that my Grail Knights are out here all alone, and especially his nearest unit are 40 um, goblins with, with bows. And I don't want him to be able to whittle this unit down just by those cheap uh, goblin bows, especially if he got the poison spell off. Uh, during the shooting phase, my bowman put three wounds on the trolls. So I think I did two wounds the first time and three wounds the second time, and that's only ten bowmen shooting. I mean, absolutely crazy. Um, so that's great. He's down one, and, and, and another one is down to one wound. 
So go Orc and Goblin turn three. He charges with his giant, and I just decided to flee, knowing that my bowman would go off the table, because I, there was nobody else he could charge, and I wanted him to fail charge so he couldn't move up any faster. Had I stayed, he would have charged me, beat me in combat probably, and then overrun and got that much closer to my lines. Uh, he goes in and charges the Grower Leak in the in the water, so he he doesn't get all those rank bonuses, which is kind of nice. Uh, I mean, I've got you know, got that going for me at least. Uh, and otherwise, the table looks like that. And keep in mind, this is a a magic reduced game, so it, whenever I have plans for a magic, it, you know, it, it's not always very easy uh, to get off. So here we go, Bretonian turn three. Um, so my men at arms with the damsel go ahead and charge the his big horde, and I had a plan for this. The the real failure in the plan though is my my knights errant tried to charge his trolls, as did my monster killer general. Uh, the general's unit I knew would not be able to make it, so I just charged him out of it. Well, what I didn't realize is once the men at arms got in there, there's no way my guys could get past them. And um, I want to say that both of those units, when I when I did my rolling for distance, they they wouldn't have got to the trolls anyway, even though they weren't there very far away. So I have two failed charges there, and the men at arms are unsupported. Well, it isn't the end of the world because my plan is that level two got the the uh, uh, the uh, transformation of Kadan spell. So my hope is I get at least six dice in the in the magic phase. I'm just going to throw them all at the transformation of Kadan turn her into a dragon, and with all of its attacks and the breath attack, um, I think I can reduce his his guys so they won't be steadfast, easily win it, and just blow on by. So I'm actually, I'm still okay with how this went. Uh, I would have been happier if the Knights Errant and the General had got, been able to get into the Trolls, but that didn't work. I uh, took my, my uh, Grail Knights, I did a reform, swift reform, then they walked eight inches, back behind my lines. I'm just going to swing. That's one thing that's great about cavalry is the mobility, so I'm just going to swing around, use them to swing around this side rather than going towards that water and towards the 50 goblin bowmen. Yeah, so there's the all the failed charges. At least the peg knight rallied. Of course, when he rallied, he blocked that whole unit off from doing anything, too. So, um, actually... I got the spell the spell off with six dice, and then he rolled five dice and dispelled it. <laughs> um, so the the whole dragon plan didn't work, and so he was steadfast, and so then my men at arms get flank charged by the trolls, and they're toast. There's no good going to come of that. Additionally, my level two got killed in combat. So, yeah, that didn't go as planned. Yeah. Uh, he brought his, his bowman into the flank of my Grow Relic. I'm thrilled with how the Grow Relic is holding up. Um, I'm just, I, I expect him to win, but I'm going to be leadership nine re-rollable, and that thing, if it can just hold up those two big blocks of goblins, it is really doing its job. And so far, it's done great. Um, I'm sitting, I still have six wounds on the Relic, plus the two battle pilgrims, and I just need, <laughs> just need that thing just to stick around for a little bit longer. Let me just move on down the line. So after combat, his, um, yeah, my men at arms got crushed, run down. Luckily, he wasn't able to get into, to reach my knights with his trolls. That's what I was really, really worried about. Um, now, if he had reached my general, I'd have been okay with that, but I didn't want him to reach my, my knights errant because I need them to be able to get the charge. So we get to Brett turn four. I bring my grill. Uh, knights around the, the side. I get uh, my Knights Errant, my Character Heavy Knight of the Realm unit, and then my individual general all charge his trolls. Then in the magic phase, and this is kind of a design of the list, I got the Savage Beast of Horus spell off. And so that means, and I got the, the upgraded version. So every character within 12 inches gets plus three attacks, plus three strength. And I've got you know, the BSB, I've got the other paladin, and I got my general. So my monster killer general with heroic killing blow, um, you know, he's got seven attacks now. So pretty happy with how that might turn out. My peg knight tried to charge level four, level four fled, and then I tried to redirect, and I failed it. 
which, which uh, was kind of a bummer. There we go. A little bit of a blurry picture, but that is a whole ton of attacks. And so we we knocked them down to one, but even with with all three units pursuing, we weren't able to run down the last remaining troll. So he gets all those uh, all those points still. That lone goblin model, just so you know, that's the the character that charged into the flank of my peg knight so long ago. And so that's what it looks like. Uh, not thrilled with that. My he's going to be able to counter charge my character unit, but the nice thing is my, my Prophetess has the Crown of Command, and uh, both of my characters have either a 1-up or a 2-up re-rollable. So they're actually, you know, they'll hold up okay. So on his turn, that's what he does. He charges them. You notice my Grower Leak is still hanging tough. It's down to just the Regal Leak model, and it's down to just a few wounds. Um, but so far, it seems to be buying me the time I need to try to deal with these units and move by so I don't get ch counter-charged by those uh, topmost units. There we go. And keep in mind, he's charging me. I still have the plus three attack, plus three strength spell. So I've got some really killy characters that are really hard to wound. The problem is when that spell went off on my last turn, it was a miscast, and so the, it was a large template strength 10 hit. So that's why a lot of the unit's dead, and every character in that unit is down to one wound, or is down a wound. So although my, my paladins have a one or two up re-rollable, they only have one wound left, so my opponent really just needs to get lucky there and take a, a whole character off. There's the Grower Leak holding firm. And that's after combat. You notice he just really didn't do a whole lot to me. We did a bunch of wounds on him, but he's steadfast, and we move on down the road. So Bretonian turn five. Nice double charge there. It was really nice having the Grail Knights come all the way to the side because this won't even be a fight here. And this is as general and as BSB's unit, and we are going to tear them up. And my monster killer killing lord got a charge into the giant. So as long as he can get lucky with that heroic killing blow, uh, that would be great. Now, of course, in my magic phase, I'm going to try to get the Savage Beasts of Horus off, off. And if I get that off, he's got seven attacks uh, in which to try to get a six. So... Uh, that that can look good. So I didn't get the spell off, but it didn't matter. I had so much overkill there. General or the giant died, which caught it, caused a panic, a failed panic test for the goblins on the far left, uh, who were running away. Um, I I was hoping my knights errant would overrun far enough to reach the unit, the flank of the unit of goblin spearmen, but they didn't. They failed that. And then really a big blunder I made was my. My uh, character-heavy unit, I think the way I, I, I left them there allows the goblin unit at the top to be in their rear. And if I just were to reform slightly so that if they charge that unit, they'd be hitting my BSB in the, in the flank, and then I could just issue a challenge with my Green Knight model, move him in the BSB's place, one-up re-rollable, uh, do your best, I'm going to be stubborn. It would have protected my, my uh, prophetess. It would have been just a beautiful ending. I think I would have easily had the game. But leaving it as I did, if he charges me, he's going to be in my rear, and that could really hurt. So if all that makes sense. And there's these, uh, these guys fleeing. So he charged me, and when I realized he'd be in the rear, I just uh, fled. And then <laughs> I fled, and I rolled just the perfect amount to, to land right on top of that, of that uh, fanatic. 2d6. <laughs> And he rolls a 12. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So we distribute the hits. It, he, he blows my level 4 prophetess to absolute smithereens. These two didn't take a single wound. They have, again, a 1-up, 2-up re-rollable with ward save. No, no ward save, but with their armor save, um, they saved them all, which was very, very lucky. So, yeah, just an epic fail. I, mean, I, I had the game easily, easily won just by repositioning my unit a little bit. And then when I didn't, just a little bit of bad rolling, and it does that. Uh, then he redirected and went into my uh, Grail Knights. Uh, I think I'm okay. I've got a lot of attacks. I, I should um, be able to counter all that uh, static combat res that he has. 
Uh, he rallies his big unit. His troll doesn't rally, but he's not going to get off the board now, so he saved all those points. Then during the magic phase, he gets his vortex off, and uh, yeah, it, I, my green knight got lucky and lived, but I think I had to take a characteristic test, and um, the BSB failed a toughness test and died. And now the game's getting very, very, very close in points. <laughs> Uh, so the Grail Knights, um, uh, I forget who won this battle, but we stuck around. And so on my turn, we just continue fighting that out. The uh, Knights Errant would have loved to charge into the flank of that unit, but he put his his level 2 right in front of him, so basically sacrifices his level 2. So I charge him, kill him, and the Grail Knights stick around. And that's the game. Just a real, real fun game. Um, when it came down to it, he killed about 175 points worth of my stuff more than what I killed of his stuff, which surprised me. But he got a lot of points there at the end with my characters. Um, I killed his BSB. Uh, he killed my BSB. Uh, I killed his general. So um, I think when it came down, I think he won by 75 points. Um, it was either a, a, a very minor victory for him, which is a victory nonetheless, or it was a draw. I'm just really not sure. Uh, but... These are the kind of games I love to have. Uh, I just, I had a lot of fun with it. There's a lot of weird stuff going on, a lot of options, and uh, it was good. Hope you enjoyed it.